Welcome to Points of Change, the show where week by week we chat with coaches, mentors, change makers, visionaries, experts and all sorts of people with incredible life transformation stories about how they transform their lives, what have been their critical points of change and how are they now helping others to create transformation in their own lives. We hope you enjoy the show. Make sure you like and subscribe. Welcome to Points of Change, Jessica Della Morena. It's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here, Johnny. <laughs> well, I'm really pleased you could come and join me today. And one of the reasons that is that when we had a chat before is that your story is quite special and uh, not something that probably a lot of people would envy you of, although maybe a lot of your career success people might, but some of the stuff that you've been through recently is a bit less enviable. Mm. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and and perhaps your story about your professional story and what's been going on for you. Yeah. Well, until about three years ago, I was going about my business. I was, uh, well, still am an executive in a multinational company that is uh, amazing in the travel industry. And I was traveling a lot, both professionally and for personal reasons, because that was one of my big hobbies that I really enjoyed. And I was working in business development, sales, marketing, finance, I mean, lots of different areas. And it gave me a really great understanding of the company all around. And in that last year, I started getting involved in more of the cultural change management programs that were happening in the company related to transformational leadership. And so I was getting more involved in this. And then one fine day, I, I walked into a doctor appointment for a checkup and I was given a, a really difficult to hear diagnosis. And so I was told I had like an aggressive form of cancer and that I needed to have more tests because they thought that potentially it was not only located where they saw it, but also in other places spreading, you know, spread through my body because of the type of cancer they found. So I spent basically a week wondering whether just with the thought that it could be everywhere and I didn't really know and I needed to figure it out. And it was interesting because you think that doctors know everything. And, mm. and until then I had always gone to the doctor and always gotten a response about what I had and taken medicine and I've been fine. But here it suddenly became this kind of detective work to figure out throughout all these tests to figure out what was really happening and what to do about it. So a week later, I was, I was confirmed that it was actually still that very bad, aggressive cancer, but it was localized, which meant that it was not spread over my body. And yeah. there was a plan. The next day I went in and they put in a port cath which is, it's, it's like a device, they implant below your skin so that you can have the chemotherapy with it. And they, they put it through an artery and it's, it was the first step for me where I was very squeamish before about all these things. And then suddenly I had to get very used to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I went through uh, four months of treatment that was very intense and it also led me through a big personal transformation. And I guess that's what I'd like to share with you guys here today it has really taken me towards uh, a new project which I've launched to try to help others going through the same because of the lack of positivity and uh, information that I was really looking for in this process. So I'd like that others going through the same or other kinds of adversity have what I lacked as I went through this. Yeah, I, well, I definitely appreciate that. And we'll definitely look forward to getting into that. I want to, to talk, uh, if, if it's okay with you, talk a little bit about that journey, because I think most people, if they haven't had that kind of experience themselves personally, you know, it's words that you dread to ever hear from your doctor or, or medical professional, that the, the big C, as people call it, that you've given a diagnosis and all the things that must run through your mind. What went on for you personally at that, that time? Because you, you still have to wait and find out what's going on with things. It's, it's a really tough Yeah position to be in. Well, it was really tough, but then it's like you have this kind of double feeling because you're thinking, wait a minute, if, it, if I have it all over my body, then maybe this is like the, the, my, I feel good right now, but maybe I won't very soon. So I should make the most of these moments. You have on the one hand, you're really scared and there's all this fear and you go through a lot of emotion, especially fear and anger. But at the same time, you, or at least I was just thinking, gosh, now I have this time with my kids, with my family, and I, I want to make the most of it and enjoy it so much. So I really tried to stay in a very positive place. And in the evenings, especially, it was harder for me. I would get more emotional, but I would allow myself to process that. 
and then just say, I don't know the, I don't know the outcome yet. I'm not going to anticipate an outcome until I know what it is. And I just tried to stay in that space. Yeah. As soon as I did hear the outcome that I, there was a, basically a plan forward with some treatment that I was going to do, which sounded very daunting, but at least it was suddenly it was like, okay. I have something that I that I know I can do. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but I have to just have faith that it'll be effective and yeah. just focus on that and then focus on making myself feel good and taking care of my mental and uh, emotional and spiritual well-being because I just knew what, not only was it going to support me in the process of going through the treatment, but it also was going to allow me to heal on all levels. Yeah. yeah. That's something I was curious about really, what sort of personal or emotional resources you had at that time that helped to see you through this particularly. Yeah. So at that time I had, I had worked a little bit with Reiki. I had worked with meditation. But I hadn't really done much more than that. I did, I've always been very interested in personal growth and have, I'm a big nonfiction self-help reader. I love all yeah, that. Me too. I think yeah. it's something that always is just part of my personality of what I'm interested in. But I hadn't, I had worked with it on a very superficial level, basically. As I thought I had worked with it on a very deep level. But when this happened to me, I realized that I had only touched the surface and that I hadn't gone so deep as potentially I, I would have needed to. And I think that's where these big things that happen, you know, these life events are that, that are huge disruptors in our lives, they really can push us to go there because as soon as those fundamental pieces of your life, like your health is in question, then it just disrupts you so much that it's, it gives you the license to, to break everything you have and just really look at it in detail. Yeah. And so based on what I started researching and speaking to others that I potentially knew that were also very positive and in the kind of mentality that I wanted to be in my mindset of positivity and being constructive. And I spoke to others that were not going through cancer. One, one friend was, and, and I spoke to her quite a lot about it, but I spoke to a lot of other people who weren't going through it, but who had gone through other adversity and had used certain tools. And so they were sharing with me what those tools were that helped them through depression or through different other, you know, illnesses. And I started looking into that based on that word of mouth recommendations. And so I went uh, and found a bio decoding specialist. That was just a, an amazing experience for me. And I've continued working with that. I went to a psychologist. I started going to Reiki for sessions weekly. I was going to a physical therapist. I was going to a hypnotherapist, to a reflexologist, like quantum healing, basically all the things that, that people were telling me about that felt right to me, that felt yeah. could be helpful. I wanted to give it a chance. And so I would go with an open mind and, and hear it out and see. And, and in some cases, actually in most cases, I went cr pretty far with all of them and continued to work with them and actually have continued to work with them as time has progressed. So yeah, it was just a kind of a moment of starting to look into new things and trying them and seeing when I think as you start going down that rabbit hole, it's like peeling an onion. So you start mm -hmm. peeling and removing different things, from different limitations or limiting beliefs or behaviors that you don't even realize that you have. <laughs> and I think it's so eye opening. And, and I think that that goes to the core of my learning in this whole process, because as soon as your life is disrupted like that, it just breaks it down completely. And you start realizing that actually you're the one who's deciding how you're living your life. And I was conscious of that before, but not to this extent. And I think it just allowed me to really integrate the concept very deeply to the extent that I really realized that it wasn't only my choices in behaviors or, or my choices in actions, but it was my choices in behaviors and in thoughts that were there that I wasn't even conscious of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You often hear people when they have big, life experience, life events like this, especially perhaps the health crisis sort of things, where you will hear them talk about how it ended up being an opportunity for reevaluation and appreciation of what an appreciation of everything that was good in life and, and a real sort of turnaround point in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly I've had uh, some guests on the show already, even in the short history of the show, who have talked about these things. And whilst I recognize maybe not everybody has that same experience, it's certainly a, a real potential for 
for people who have some kind of significant life event that wakes them up and gets people gets you to reevaluate and look at what's really important and to start exploring some of the things that are really going to help you on your journey and the resources that can really be there for you and f- for you what out of those things has been perhaps the ones that have really stood out for you as being like you know what, I would go straight to this if somebody was in the same situation that you're going to recommend them to mm. to start exploring. Yeah, so I think the first thing is being open about what you're going through. Because a lot of people I talk to end up saying, oh, I suffered in silence for so long. And people do that because, I guess, because they're scared, there's stigma around mental illness, stigmas around cancer. I mean, people don't want to talk about it because... It's just, uh, it's not a fun topic to begin with, but I think there's a lot of fear around being vulnerable about it. And so for me that I would just say that's the first step, because as soon as you are able to be vulnerable about it, be vulnerable about it and talk about it, then you're going to start facing it as something that you need to solve, something you need to work on and, and that you can get support for your community around you won't know that you need help unless you voice it unless you specifically talk about the issue that you're having. So that's the first step and allows you to heal. And I think there, once you do that, then you can start looking both outwards and inwards, right? So looking outwards is, you know, outwards, you have different therapists and professionals and books and information out there that can help you give you tools that are going to let you do the exploration inwards and then it's a question of saying okay now i have to sit down and start like breaking it down and it's no good to just read about things you have to actually do the exercises on yourself and do the thinking and really question yourself question those beliefs and i think as soon as you start doing that it just it it makes a massive difference because you shift your mindset you're moving into really a role where you're taking responsibility about what you're doing When you don't do that, you remain in a victim mode where you're looking at it like, oh, this, why did this happen to me? I I got sick. What what did I do? Why why, why did I deserve this? Now I'm going to go through all this horrible side effects and all these things. And and you get into that mode and that's not a constructive, positive mode. So as soon as you shift from that to actually looking for ways in which to feel better, to help yourself to get third opinions, fourth opinions on the doctor side. None of that is, it, all of that is, is useful because it allows you to learn more about what's happening to you. And obviously all of that is a, is a taking control as it's a take a stepping forward and saying, this is, yes, this happened, but I'm deciding what I'm going to do with it. And I'm deciding yeah. how I'm going to manage it. And I'm going to do all these things. And it really empowers you so much. And I think that's the, the first step forward. Do you think that then with the resources that you, you've now been putting together with people, is, is that like the sort of foundation of it, helping people to, to move into that self-empowerment kind of phase with it and, and not feel that they're the victim of, of this and that life is happening to them, but actually rather that there are opportunities here and that there are ways forward that life doesn't have to, it's not like everything is going to be terrible from here on in. It's like that there's still things to, good things uh, and potentially things to look forward mm-hmm. to. Absolutely. And yeah, that exactly is the point of the, I've created this website that's called you are the hero.com. And it, it has that name because the point is that you are the hero, right? You are the hero of your own story. You don't need to look outwards anymore. There's lots of outwards. You can get a lot of tools and information, but the, the true knowledge of what you want and what's true to you is within. And that's where you have to look towards. But yeah. So I think that the, the point of you are the hero is that people can go there and read stories of people who have found their inner heroes and they're going to share their stories in a way in which they are giving highlights of their story. But that's not the point of the story is really to share what were those things that helped them the most in this process? Did they use bio decoding? And if so, how did they use it? Right? Did they, what did that therapist help them do? And are there certain tricks or techniques that were most useful? What was most grounding for you? No. So the web page is divided in categories just for kind of a nicer reading experience, but people can search with keywords for any topic 
or they can just read through in the hero stories section or go by topic and read about cases related to COVID or cases related to love, to work, to inner self, health, basically anything. And I think that was also something that I really realized is that I was starting to reach out to people. For me, what was important in speaking to people was not that necessarily that they were going through the same thing I was, but that they were, that they would have gone through some sort of large adversity that would have led them to transformation. And that's something that, that it's a common thread that connects all of us. And so it was in connecting in with those kind of people that it was, that it made me feel less lonely and, uh, and feel like I was understood because I think when you're going through something like that, it's like your perceptions are changing so dramatically and you're the way you're looking at life and how you're prioritizing and you know, how you're reviewing your values. And there's so much happening and your life is completely upside down that, that it's hard to, at those given moments to relate to just day to day things. I would have this feeling always of being in a weird movie that wasn't even me. You have this detachment where you're seeing yourself and, uh, and you're going through the motions and it's a very strange time at the beginning. And so being able to be surrounded at, even virtually by people who are, who have been through something similar, I think is key. And that's what I'm trying to build for others who are going through adversity. And for me, who I'm still going through adversity because I'm still in my own process. It's such a blessing to be able to read these stories that, that, that are coming that I get to read and I get to translate. I, I translate them into Spanish or English, depending on what language they come in. And right. so I get to really integrate each story and really read it deeply. And it's so inspiring for me. And that's what I, I'm really hoping that others are going to get. And it's going to help them really shift from to a mindset of positivity and of looking for possibilities. Because when you do start looking for possibilities, you find them, they're there. Yeah. But unless you look, then you might not necessarily see them. For sure. Can, can you give us a sense of a few of the stories that you've come across there? Yeah. Well, all kinds. There's been a few very interesting relate, relate stories about COVID experiences from the context of people who haven't gone through one person related to their work and how they've transformed. Another one was talking about how he was grieving. He didn't understand. He was grieving for the world, for all the losses, but he had this bigger grief and didn't understand where it was coming from. And then he realized that it was that he was grieving his old life, right? So he felt almost also bad for, for ashamed for grieving for that because there's so many people going through such horrible situations. But it's true, everyone, even our children, are grieving the things that they used to be able to do and can't do now. And so I, I loved that story because it was really well articulated. There's a story about, there's a lot of health stories, uh, uh, cancer stories. There are stories about depression and about migraines. And, and there's a couple stories about mental health where the stories relate back to the person's own behavior and how the, you know they've realized that potentially their behavior is leading to certain ailments. And that was super interesting. Yeah. Just all the work that they're doing there. There's stories from caregivers of or family members of the children who's autistic or one story about her mother who is, uh, has Alzheimer's. Um, there's stories, divorce, you name it, you have it. Yeah. But I think the common thread again is what I was saying before. It's all of these heroes who have written their stories have all really used the opportunity as a, as a moment to evolve and grow personally and to learn from it. And I think that there's that commonality. And then the other commonality is that they want to help others who are going through the same or the same or something similar. And so in doing that, they've been very generous in sharing their story and in being so open and really forthcoming about all their experiences. And I think that's also a really beautiful part about it because it really shows that we need to move from just more, more to to become much more collective, no, and and realize that we're all connected and that we're all going through the same thing. And it looks like we're not because people are very detached in many contexts. And again, maybe not being vulnerable and sharing their stories for fears of being rejected or stigma or whatever it is that they're not, they're sharing their story for, 
But yeah. in sharing it, it's, it's a recognition of, hey, we're all going through uh, adversity of some sort and we're all one. So let's help each other and be there for each other and connect more. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people talking in recent times about how we, it seems that we are in many ways moving away from the sort of individualism mindset that we've had in being prevalent, particularly in probably particularly in Western society for quite some time and returning more to a more of a community and connected mindset. Do, do you feel that? It seems that like you're a part of that with what you're doing, but do you notice that around outside of things you're doing as well? I, unfortunately, on the one hand, on the one hand, I see that there's a lot of initiatives, which for me, it just makes me very happy to see that there are. On the other hand, I feel like with COVID, it's been, we're all in our homes, closed in. I feel more isolated than before, of course, no? And so there's a bit of a paradigm there, no? Where on the one hand, we're, I think there's a shift towards that to wanting to help others. But at the same time, there's a more detachment with COVID. You walk down the street and everyone has the mask and you can't really do sure. facial expressions anymore. And it's, I think there's this whole kind of combination there happening, you know, and lots of people still are very fearful. I'm here in Madrid and we have uh, still quite a dire situation and you were still living a very strange life. And so I think on the one hand, I do see that happening and it's exploding in different places. And I, I love that I'm seeing that, but at the same time, the situation around is not conducive necessarily to people connecting in that way. And so, yeah. I don't know, I, I think there, there might be a lot of people that are actually going through a lot of difficulty because they live alone or they've gone through hardship with COVID. And so these things are even more necessary now than before. And so, yeah, if we can have a, have a very safe environment where people feel that they can come out and share that and do so because they want to help others and really bring any light and, and recommendations they can to others, then I think this is the space to do it. And it's the space that I would have liked to have found when I was first diagnosed and started looking online and found just such negativity and mortality rates and information that just... You know, it, the first day I got online, I regretted it massively and said, I'm never going to yeah. again. Yeah, There's, I, I suppose when you think about checking out any kind of serious medical issue online, you're mostly going to hear all the all the medical talk or everything gets, it gets always gets treated as a very serious issue, of course. And it is. But also there's the thing of, yeah, but, you know, it pulls you into this like, well, suddenly your life has to become serious as well because everything around that feels serious. And, and this is even in my very first episode of this show with Heidi Lachlan, where we were talking about her diagnosis and she was diagnosed with stage four, stage four breast cancer and what she went through with all of that, that at some point she had a, a kind of a similar realization, I think, of this is all so dark and it's all so, so scientific. Like, scientific that's probably the wrong word to use but you know, it was also clinical and and cold and there's no, there was no she wasn't really feeling any love there or any connection. everything was negative and like you're describing it and that's what perhaps does need to change the language we use the stories we tell around things like this are really important and hearing positive stories especially when you're going through the worst time I think that has to be the time you most need that you most need to be able to connect with other people and say you know what this is tough. This is a horrible situation, but look, I'm not alone. And here's how people have been getting through it. Here are resources. Here are people who uh, have situations where they've been able to still find positivity, still find good things in life, still be a resource and an in even an inspiration for each other. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the most powerful things we could do with our lives is give inspiration to other people. Exactly. At what point, yeah. So at what point for you did you recognize or realize that that's what you wanted to do? I, it was very, at the onset, I just, even in the midst of my whole, at the beginning of my process, I was always um, offering to help, you know, others if they, I don't know, if I knew of someone whose family member had suddenly gotten diagnosed, I would, I would say, look, I'm super happy to help them if they need anything. No. So I was already offering that. And I think what you were saying was making me think that it, it is exactly that. It's like when you, even if you're in the midst of going through this horrible situation, 
when you put yourself in the service of others to really help someone, it just changes completely also the mindset that you're, that you have as you go through it. No. So it's like now also with this website, for example, no, we, I'm going through my, I had a, so I had a radical remission, but then 18 months after I had a second, like a relapse and metastasis. And so now I'm going through again, treatment. And in the midst of this, and it was just horrible to go through it again and be like, just in the middle of this again. And it was, I just thought, you know what, this has to have a purpose. Like the, it's not for no reason that I'm going through this. I have to find a big purpose. And I obviously have a very strong purpose in being, being here for my kids and for my family. But I just thought this has to have a bigger purpose. And then I thought, you know what? I have always thought about what I would have liked. Let me create that for others. And so it's really just a question of saying, I'm going to create this now for them. And while I'm doing it, I'm also looking at the things I'm doing now as potential things that can help others. So when I find a new treatment, like I tried a new one two weeks ago, which is this hyperbaric chamber. And it's all about oxygenating your body and cancer cells apparently don't like that type of environment. And so it it really supports treatment and it supports a lot of things like migraines and all kinds of things. And so I'm almost looking at myself as, okay, I'm doing this because this is my, I'm, I need to do things that are going to help me heal and help me get through my illness faster and better. But it's also something I can share with others, no? And I have a voice to be able to do that. So it just gives... A, a nicer, a, not nicer, but it's a stronger purpose in, in just your daily activities, which I think just changes completely your, your perspective. No. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Are, are there, are there certain paths that you would perhaps guide people away from your own experience? Or do you think when you go through this, you just need to explore for yourself and find your own way? My recommendation is to be very clear about what you need and to put yourself in the center of your experience again, because at least in my case, I think as time had progressed, when all of this happened to me, I realized that it wasn't me at the center of my life anymore because I was doing so many things that I had to do or that were requirements, no? And then I started analyzing what those requirements were and not all of them were being, were that most of them were my own requirements, but that, that we're coming from some, I don't know, from society or from some experience I had as a child or from you name it, like it could have been anything, but it wasn't something that I really truly wanted to do. I started breaking that down, but I really started thinking about what is it that I want around me? Do I want positivity? Do I want only uplifting information? Do What is it that I need right now in the context of mindset and uh, surroundings and community? And then I said, okay, then I'm going to establish that. I just had to make very clear decisions about where I was going to spend my time, who I was going to spend my time with, what I was going to read, what I was going to make, make available to myself. And so it's about setting boundaries and uh, that are about self-love and thinking about what is it that I truly need right now and not being afraid to ask for it or to set those boundaries in conversation. Yeah. I had to, <laughs> my friends laugh about it because it was very uncharacteristic of me because I've always been pretty like a um, people pleaser, wanting to not looking for conflict and this type of thing. But after the first conversation I had with somebody where they started uh, wanting to relate to me, they were trying to relate to what I had just told them that I have cancer and this and that. And they're, the normal thing people do is try to empathize and they try to you know, relate with something. And so the person started telling me about their father who, who, you know, had had cancer and who died. And and then you you think, how was that helpful for me? So I left that conversation, not feeling very good. And the rest of the day was on and on in my head. And then afterwards, I just thought, what, like that person was well-meaning, right? He was trying to connect with me. And I very much appreciate that the care and the thought that he had there but he didn't realize that like the content of what he said was really detrimental for me. So, so then I said, okay, next time this happens, I'm going to stop the person before they start. (laughs) So the next day conversation starts. Oh yes. And oh yeah. I have, and I said, wait a minute, hold your horses. (laughs) Is what you're about to say going to be helpful and uplifting for me? And if it isn't, then just please put a pin in it. We'll talk about it at another moment. And just right now I really need positive and uplifting words. Um, 
And so I tried to be very kind and polite in, in setting those limits, but it's, if you don't do it, no one's going to set the limits that you need and the boundaries you need of what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I used to listen to uh, the late Dwayne Dyer's podcast and, and a lot of his talks and speeches. And, and I remember uh, it's going to be an approximation, but I do remember him talking about having an answer machine message that says, don't leave me a message unless it's positive and uplifting kind of thing. If, if it's not good news or it's not something that's going to add joy or happiness to my life, then no, bye. <laughs> but yeah, this is important because I think when things like this happen in people's lives, we, you know that someone is going through something. If you're not going through it, it's, it's very hard to know how to talk about it or how best to support. And, and perhaps not everybody even wants to be that sort of person who feels like I have to, now I have to tell everybody to frame the conversation. <laughs> How can everyone help each other to, to think, you say, think about, is it going to be uplifting and supportive, but how do we start those conversations in a way that you think would be helpful or supportive? You mean, so from a perspective of like me going through it, I just, as soon as I, I saw that where the conversation was going, then I would interject <laughs> or but if you're speaking to someone who is going through that and, yeah. and you don't quite know what to say or you feel you need to empathize or something like that, how, how do you recommend somebody should support their friends or family and start those conversations yeah. to get past that initial awkwardness? Perhaps? Well, I guess it would be the first is the, the connection is empathizing, no, and acknowledging I, that I can't even imagine how hard what you're going through is for you right now. No. And, and I'm just know that I'm here for you for anything that you need. And just tell me, let me know what it is that you need right now. Would do you need, would you like me to spend time with you? Or is it just maybe sitting together? What is it that you need right now? And ask them point blank, no, or say, would it be helpful if I, I don't know, brought you dinner or what is it that you, what can I help you with? And many times I found that it was just really about the person being there. One of my closest friends wrote a, a story on my, on the website, which I uh, recommend that you check out, which is called just being there. And she wrote about what her experience was being by my side throughout the process. And so she was saying she would just come over and be in my house and she would sit with me and I would sleep, be sleeping through the day where I'm the days that I was having treatment and she would have her book and she would just be there. She would go and make food and try to make something that I could eat. And she writes about how she now knows all my cupboards and in and out of my house because she, just, she was here for just here for me throughout the process. And, and I think it just is very personal. It depends on what each person needs, but if they're afraid to ask, then I think then is the question is like, what can I do for you? Um, yeah. 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 It, it would be nice if we could all be more like that with each other anyway in life, let alone when there's something going on. But yeah, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. See what people need, ask how you can best support and help them. And uh, how can I be a good friend to you today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice way to do it. I think that's something that people don't think about so much when you're going through something like this, you, you also should realize that, that these types of things, it doesn't have a beginning and an end. I'm still going through treatment. I have checkups very regularly. I'm have treatment every three weeks. I'm going through quite a lot and it's yes, the, the, the beginning of the whole process is over or that initial shock in the first months. And, and now I'm in a different mode, but I'm still going through this. And so it's yeah. every three months when I have my checkups, it's just, it's horrible. You start, you, you spend three weeks where you can't sleep because you're nervous and you have all this going on. And so I think it's really, really good. I think of people to, when they're just, they're knowing when that's happening, you know, and you're not going to talk about it because you don't want to talk about it because it's just very stressful, but that they're aware that those processes are happening so that they can be supportive, no, and, and just send you a message saying, I know this week is tough, blah, 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 or what can I do for you this week or anything like that. Yeah, I've known people who I maybe have a bit of a tendency towards it myself, but when going through something, don't always want to burden other people with it. And I think it's important to understand your friends, the people who love and care about you, it's not a burden to them. They they want to be part of it. They want to be part of your support. They they want to be there for you. They don't hold this stuff in or, or, or do this alone. Reach out and get the help and support that you need. 
I love that your website is there for everybody and that even though you're going through treatment yourself and this is all still an ongoing thing for you, that you're still out here talking about it, helping people and being an inspiration as well. How can people who maybe are going through some stuff right now, maybe it's a di recent diagnosis or maybe it's something more ongoing or mental health issues or suffering, just struggling with everything that's been going on in the world lately, how can they come and find out more about you and your site and the stories of inspiration there? Yeah. So people can go to youarethehero.com. It's spelled with a U, not Y-O-U. It's youarethehero.com. It's in Spanish and in English. It's going to be in Portuguese very shortly. You can go there. Just go to Hero Stories. There's in the menu, you go to Hero Stories and you can just check out stories as you like or type in a keyword or go through the categories and read and see just lots of amazing inspiration and then there's a section called share my story and so you can go there and there you have a form where you can submit a story up to 500 words the stories should follow the the values of the community which are about respect about trust about it has to be uplifting we're trying to help yeah. each other the story should follow those guidelines there's a downloadable pdf with kind of storytelling tips where i included some questions which are useful in thinking about what you want to write and then we have an Instagram community as well, where we have quotes and different things from the stories that we show. And the, the Instagram is at you are the hero with spaces in between you space like this. And, and it has also, I'm trying to do when I'm feeling up for it, I'm doing 30 minute live sessions with some of the heroes that have shared their stories so that we Great. can go further in depth into those learnings they had and talk about them. So I'm doing yeah. those as well. And, and yeah, so all that, I hope I'm building a lot of resources that hopefully you can go in and, and see. And I'm doing a bit of a calling because I want to find 10,000 heroes. I want to unveil 10,000 heroes that are in our society that today are anonymous and have not shared their stories to come and share their story, to be vulnerable, to release their emotions in, in doing that and to help others. And, uh, and then I'm hoping that it's just, it's as a resource, it's found by lots of people that can, that need it right now and need a, a beacon of light to, to move forward and to, to really transform and, and shift their mindset to make this an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So for, for anyone who's watching on YouTube, you can check the episode description. If you're listening to the podcast, check the show notes. You'll have to see all the links to that Jessica has just mentioned in the show notes and description. And go and check it out. Go and check those stories and, and get in contact with Jessica as well. Go and connect with Jessica and the community there as well. There are people there for you who, who know what it's like and can you know, it's, we can share this stuff. We can bear it together and we can get through it. Do you have any particular words for anyone who is really feeling it right now? It's uh, may maybe just a, a recent, something has come on them and this is, uh, they're really struggling right now. What, what would you say for them? Yeah, I would just say that, first of all, you are not alone <laughs> and that everybody around you is going through things. It's, it's just a, you just don't suffer in silence. Reach out, talk about it. If you need to go to someone that you don't know because you don't, you feel comfortable with someone around you, even message me or go to a psychologist, go to whoever you need to go to, but reach out and don't suffer in silence. And yeah, and every situation is an opportunity to find, to learn about yourself and to find a better life for yourself. Because in breaking down things, disruption, it, it breaks down things, but it gives you the license to think differently about things and to make changes and to choose the life you want. Yeah. That, that was That's wonderful. I wish you every success on your worthy goal of finding your 10,000 heroes on your site and, of course, on your own journey to health and to recovery as well. And I hope that that all goes incredibly well for you. And I look forward to keeping connected and keeping track of that as well and to helping more people find you are the hero as well and be the heroes. In, in their own lives and become an inspiration to others too. I think that's very powerful. Thank you for everything you've shared here today, Jessica. Uh, I definitely look forward to connecting with you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. It does help other people to find the show. 
If you'd like to be a guest on Points of Change or you know someone who'd make a great guest, then please get in touch with the show. The best way to do that is by email john at presentinfluence.com. If you'd like to join us in our live audience when we record the shows, please get in touch with me on social media. We can give you all the links. We'd love to see you again on the next episode of Points of Change.